Hi, this is Max, and this is my first video in a long time. I've been writing tutorials over on my Patreon about using Blender and Sphere plugin for creating artwork specifically for plotters. I've been using Sphere and Blender for almost a year as a hobby, and wanted to share my knowledge with you. In this video, I'd like to go over the basics and at the same time show you some tips and tricks that I've learned so far. First, a short introduction to Sphere Choke. Uh, Sverchok is a free plugin for Blender that has a powerful engine for parametric modeling. It has over 600 various functions, also called nodes, that you can put together to do all kinds of things for 3D and 2D modeling or animation. Here are some examples of parametric models created with Sverchok. Where do you get Sverchok? Um, you can download Sverchok from uh, Sverchok's GitHub, um, which is uh, this address right here. Um, you just download it uh, as a zip file and you install it as you would install any other Blender plugin. Okay, I already have it installed. So when you have it installed, you just need to switch to the Sverchok panel um, in one of these options and you need to create a new node tree. Node tree just means a new sphere choke program. Now, when you have a new node tree, it's a blank canvas. Let's see, what can we add? So here are some of the nodes that, that are there. Um, they're kind of grouped together in different categories. You can see uh, there's a bunch of them and um, we'll get to some of them in this video. Um, and I usually go to the sphere choke documentation website to to reference the nodes that I'm not familiar with. Okay, so now we have a blank canvas. Let's start with uh, creating a simple circle. Um, you can use the menu right here, add generator circle, or you can use a shortcut. I'm on the Mac and I use option space to, to pull up the quick search bar. Um, for um, finding the nodes that I want. And I type in circle. Um, there you go. So now we see nothing on the on the render panel. We, we don't see anything because we, we simply just have the geometry of the circle, but it's not uh, being represented in any way. One way you can uh, view what this uh, looks like is by adding a, a viewer node. Uh, option space again, uh, viewer node, viewer draw. So here are the two nodes. Okay, now we need to connect the vertices to vertices and edges to edges. So uh, the vertices are just the points along the circle and the edges are the actual, um, the lines that connect the, the dots. So um, here you go. Let's connect the edges and then we should see the lines appear. There you go. Now, um, with Sphere Choke, uh, it's really easy to change different things, different parameters, and uh, to, to see right away what you're going to get. So you can play with all kinds of things here. Um, now, let's see. What if you wanted to add um, a bunch of circles with different sizes? Um, so there's a very useful node here uh, called random number, random number generator. And uh, in this node, it specifies uh, how many of these um, things you want to be output. And then you can specify the dimensions, um, like the minimum and the, and the maximum bounds of the random numbers being generated. So let's create 10 circles of different diameters. Um, you can just drag the value uh, of the random number generator into the radius of the circle. Now it's pr pretty big, so let's uh, change to float. And this is from zero to one. Let's do one to two, and we should see a bunch of different circles appear right away. Now, it's really easy to, to change that number 
and to see um, how that affects uh, the result. Um, I usually don't render the vertices, so I, I, I can disable them here in the viewer draw. Um, and the second one here is the edges, and the third one is the faces. We don't have the faces connected right now, but if you wanted, you could do that. So that's what it would look like. Okay, so um, I'll show you another trick. Um, if you wanted to see what numbers are being generated in the random number generator, you can press Control key and click on the node, and it will open up this temporal st stethoscope that shows you all the numbers that are being generated here. Uh, so this way, it's really easy to inspect the data that you're getting. Okay, now, next, if we wanted to create an image that looks um, something like this, let me show you here, that has arcs instead of circles um, that are uh, rotated all differently, how do we do that? Let's take a look. Um, if we change the degrees of the circle, does that give us something close um, to what we were trying to do? Uh, it doesn't look like that. So, okay, let's try this. Let's drag the random number generator into the degrees. Um, okay, no, that, that doesn't work either because the numbers that are generated are too small. Let's create the numbers that are uh, from, let's see, like 180 to 360 instead. Okay, so we're not quite getting um, kind of just the arcs. Um, let's take a look at a different way to make those. So instead of a circle, um, actually, let's remove everything here. Instead of a circle, uh, just the, the circle node, there's another type of circle called circle curve node. Now this uh, node has more options for us to to have the, the minimum and the maximum um, kind of rotation of the circle. So it could be just the arc um, on the circle and not the whole thing. Um, to use the curve nodes, um, you need to insert uh, evaluate curve um, node and then uh, you need to also be able to view it, right? So you can add viewer node or you could use uh, control, you press the control key and you click on the node and that gives you a temporal viewer node already connected. Okay, so I connect this, the circle curve to the evaluate curve and uh, this is how many vertices I want to be on the circle. So let's keep it at 15. Um, the angle units in the circle uh, curve node are in radians by default. Uh, we can switch it to degrees. Um, so we'll need to use the random number generator in, in a few places here. Let's see. First, we need to change the radius of the circle to be random uh, so that each circle has a different diameter. OK, let's insert random number generator. and. I'll do. I'll keep it float from one to two, size ten. Okay. Now I have a bunch of circles. Um, you can also change the distribution if you don't like what you see. There's a ton of different options here. Um, I actually don't know what every option means, so feel free to play with that. Um, uh, I just use the uniform. Um, now let's copy this node and paste it, um, apple C, apple V. Okay, so we have the same node. Let's uh, change the maximum um, arc. Uh, in the circle curve, let's see, what does this give us? Okay, so that looks like that's kind of working. Um, this is going to be the maximum 360 degrees. Okay, now we are getting uh, a bunch of circles, but they're not rotated randomly. How would we do that? 
So there's this uh, center node um, or input that we can use that creates a new matrix. Okay, now what is this? Matrix um, for location, scale, and axis, um, you can provide different values to position or to scale or to rotate um, your object. So this will rotate it, um, this will change the position, and this will change the scale. Okay, I'm gonna keep it at one, one here. Uh, actually at zero and on the x-axis. Okay, now it looks like this angle is what we need to change for each of these um, curves. Let's add another random number generator and change the angle of each. Um, let's see, so it'll be from zero to 360. Okay, so now that kind of looks like what we wanted already. Uh, now we see that the size 10, uh, if we change it somewhere, it's going to, it might um, mess up our picture, our output. So let's kind of refactor this program a little bit. Um, there's a um, number node. It's simply called a number and it's gonna be an integer. So that number that we have um, repeating in three places, let's change it uh, to one place here. And we just drag it there to size input in the random number generator. Now it's easy to add as many circles as, as we want without changing it in three places. All right, I kind of like this, but I actually, I don't like the radius. Um, I like, I see that the radius is quite random, uh, but it's overlapping in some places. I actually want it to be maybe consistently positioned. Um, so let's remove this random number generator and create, um, there's a node called range, range number, number range, something like this, number range, okay. And let's, use it as a float from zero. Okay, we'll, we'll have this uh, count. Okay, so we'll have 10. That's the number that we need to change here. Um, okay, and then from start to stop, I want it to be maybe like this big, 2.68. Okay, so now I kind of like that. It's uniformly spaced out. Um, each curve is spaced um, at the same, distance from each other. Okay, so um, I like this. This could already be something that you can just uh, create an SVG from from this and plot it. How would you create an SVG file? Okay, let's refresh my memory on this. I don't remember to be honest. Okay, so there are a bunch of SVG nodes that are, that are there. Let's see. SVG document, circle SVG, path SVG, mesh SVG, dimension, and so forth. Um, okay, so first we need the SVG document. SVG document has um, SVG objects input. So this is how we'll get the SVG objects and then save it as an SVG file. SVG mesh. Um, I use mesh SVG and not um, another type of SVG node uh, as an input. Let's see, there's path SVG and mesh SVG. And the difference is for the path SVG, you just provide the vertices and then it creates the um, SVG object that you can save into an SVG file. But mesh SVG is great because it has, um, it already projects whatever 3D um, model you have onto a 2D plane. So sometimes you you save on, on amount of operations that you need to do. I'll show you a little bit of this um, in a few minutes. Okay, so we just drag the vertices from the evaluate curve into here 
and the edges into polygons edges of the mesh SVG node. And now if we just drag this, I don't think it's gonna work right away because we also need to put fill and stroke. And for plotting, I use no fill, I use flat stroke and I set it at 0 0.01. Um, okay, I also need to specify where I want to save the file. So folder path, that's where I'm gonna save it. And so let's say, I'm just gonna save it here. I think I need to remove the, the name of the file. Okay, and so that's gonna be my SVG file. Okay, I press right. Okay, so let me open this file in in Chrome or something like this. Okay, so I see that it's kind of cut off over here in the bottom. Let's go back to uh, Blender. And there's this offset parameter. And the offset parameter, it moves the whole SVG output to wherever you want. Um, I don't really know what values I should put in, but let's try this and see if this makes it better. Okay, so that looks like it's actually going to work a little bit more, a little bit better. Okay, so that's our SVG output. And this technically you could uh, probably send to the plotter. Um, I pre-process all my plots with VPipe tool um, to make sure that uh, the plot is optimized. And let's see, you, you need to install a VPipe tool and you need to use um, line merge, line sort. Um, those, there are a few other co uh, commands that I use there. Line merge and line, line sort are the ones that I use uh, on all of my plots. I believe there are three commands there. Um, so you need to read the documentation and, and um, check that out. I also wrote a, a plotter files a blog post about how to optimize your files and what it means. Okay, yeah. So those are the three uh, commands that I use. Line merge, line sort, and line simplify. Okay. Let's go back to Blender. So one thing I wanted to show you is how to randomly uh, change the position of these arcs on the plane. So we see this center um, input has 21 matrices. Uh, that's the number that, that was set right here. Now, if we move just this value, it changes the position of all curves. Now. In order to move each curve individually, we just need basically 21 inputs into here. One way to quickly do that is to add a random vector. And that number 21 has to be in the count right here. And now we can connect this random uh, vector into here. So now we have 21 of these random um, vectors. Now, so that looks pretty nice. Now we're randomly distributing all these arcs um, on this scale. One problem that we have here is now, this is a three-dimensional um, object. So it's not really a 2D kind of um, output that we're looking for. But because we used the right um, mesh SVG node um, and it does project um, from the Z axis, um, it basically makes the Z axis to be zero if this plane is set to X, Y. That will give us a two dimensional output. So um, let's check that out in Chrome. Yeah, so this is the output that we're getting. Perfect. 
another way to um, to get all these curves to be in two dimensions instead of three dimensions is to add a vector rewire node and to um, basically multiply zero by I mean multiply z axis by zero and so this is uh, if you set it to scalar and you put scalar to zero um, zero will be multiplied by z and so you're going to get zero for all z coordinates of the curve so this is it for um, the introduction to Sverchok. Um, it's my first video but i'm gonna keep making more of these um, if i see that people want to to learn more um, feel free to share and uh, subscribe uh, to the channel to see more. Bye.